The Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is a way to find out a missing side of a right triangle. The Pythagorean Theorem can only be used in right triangles, and right triangles are triangles where one of the angles is a right angle, which means that it's a 90 degree angle. Besides having a right angle, right triangles have a few special parts. The side that's across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. This is the longest side of the triangle. The other two sides are called the legs. We don't differentiate between either of the legs. They're just legs. Um, the only one that's special is the one that's across from the right angle. And like I said, that's called the hypotenuse. So the Pythagorean theorem is this. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So like I said, we don't differentiate between either of the legs. So we would just say that one of the legs is side A and the other leg is side B. And so it, it doesn't matter if you say that first leg is A and the second leg is B, or we could say that this leg is B and this leg is A. It doesn't matter. The only one that matters is the hypotenuse. That one is always going to be C. So we need to pick out the hypotenuse and label it side C, and then the other two are A and B. And then we can plug our, the parts that we have into the Pythagorean Theorem to find out the missing part. So this says find the length of the hypotenuse of the given right triangle. Okay, so we know that, um, I don't have it labeled, but we know that this is the right angle. So the side that's across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So this would be my C. The other two are A and B. It doesn't matter which one is which. So I'm just going to say that the side that's 6 feet is A and the side that's 8 feet is B. So if we plug these parts into the Pythagorean Theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I would put the 6 where the A is, the 8 where the B is, and we're looking for C. All right, so to solve this, um, we're just going to simplify this left side of the triangle. So 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. And that equals C squared. So 36 plus 64 is 100. And that equals C squared. Well, we don't want to know what C squared is. We want to know what C is. So we have to take the square root. Now, usually, like if we were doing the square root method, we would put plus or minus in front of that number. But since we're talking about the length of a triangle, we can't have a negative length. So we're always going to use, when we're doing the Pythagorean Theorem, we're going to use the positive answer. So the square root of 100 is 10. So that means that our, our hypotenuse is 10 feet. All right, let's look at another one. This time they've given us the hypotenuse and one of the legs, and they want us to find the length of the leg <clears throat> that's missing. Then it says to give your answer in simplest radical form. So this is not going to be a whole number. It's going to be a radical for our answer and they just want us to simplify the radical. All right, so we know that the hypotenuse, which is the side that's across from the right angle, that is my C. And then it doesn't matter if we name that side that's the, le the leg that's four centimeters. It doesn't matter if we name it A or B. I'm just going to go ahead and say that it's A and we're going to look for B. So if we plug it into the Pythagorean Theorem, a squared, so in this case it's 4, plus b squared equals c squared, which my c is 8. Alright, let's simplify that. 4 squared is 16, plus b squared equals 8 squared is 64. So I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. And that gives me b squared equals 48. Alright, so then I'm going to take the square root. And the biggest perfect square that is in 48 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. So the 16 comes out as a 4 and the 3 stays under. So that would be my simplest radical form, 4 square root of 3. Um, and of course we're in centimeters.
All right, in this last example, it says find the length of the leg of the given right triangle and give your answer in both radical form and as an approximation of two decimal places. Okay, so um, they've given us C. That's the side that's across from the right triangle. Um, so I'm going to say that this is A and this is B. Okay, so we're going to be looking for A. A squared plus B squared, so that's 5 squared, equals 7 squared. Okay, so that's A squared plus 25 equals 49. So I'm going to subtract... 25 from both sides and that gives me a squared equals 24 and then I'm going to take the square root okay so they want us to give the answer in simplest radical form and as an approximation of two decimal places so first let's simplify the radical we get a is equal to, and the biggest perfect square in 24 is 4. Okay, so 4 would come out as a 2, and then we have the square root of 6. So 2 square root of 6 would be our radical answer. And then to do it as an approximation to two decimal places, I'm going to back up to this right here, and if you just put that in your calculator and see what you get, it comes out to be 4.898979, and it keeps going. Okay, so if it's 4.898, and they want us to round to two decimal places, we have to round that up. Um, because the number after the 9 is greater than 5. So if we round 0.89 up, then it would round up to 4.90. And that would be our approximation to two decimal places.